It's been over three years since the original Just Cause, and while it gave gamers a huge open sandbox world to play in, the missions soon became repetitive and you were left with this massive world, but with not that much to do. Now, Rico Rodriguez returns in the even more explosive sequel, Just Cause 2. But have developers Avalanche made good on their promises this time and given us much more variety and things to do? Well, once you've got over the initial shock of Rico looking a little bit like 80s TV star and 90s pop star Jimmy Nail, who had a number one hit in 1992 with Ain't No Doubt, the first thing you'll notice is this game looks amazing. The Avalanche Engine 2.0, an updated version of the engine used in the first Just Cause game, is powering a beautiful game world, unlike anything seen on a home console before. The setting is Southeast Asia this time, on the fictional island of Panau. With the varying geography, ranging from turquoise waters and golden beaches, to lush tropical jungles and snow-covered peaks. But it's no vacation, as one of the characters you meet very early on in the game says, Panau is a paradise to some, but also a graveyard to so many. Ooh, spooky. Rico's reason for being in Panau is to overthrow the evil dictator Pandak Pane. A personal twist to the story is that Rico must also track down Tom Sheldon, his former boss and the man who taught him everything. With a heavy emphasis on vertical as well as horizontal gameplay, plus Rico's grapple hook and miraculously reloading parachute, you'll soon realise that you've got the chance to do all the things you wanted to do in GTA 4 but couldn't because the developers were too busy trying to get you to go out bowling with your fat cousin. The grapple hook is Rico's most important gadget and is more versatile than a massive Swiss army knife. Not only does it work as a slingshot to get round the game world quickly, but you can have immense fun in hooking things together. For example, see an enemy standing next to an explosive barrel? Attach him to the barrel, shoot the barrel, and watch him fly, baby. So get out there and start grappling. You're limited only by your imagination. But there's not much point in doing all this cool stuff and not being able to show it to anyone, so quite thoughtfully Avalanche have included a video capture mode, allowing you to upload your gameplay footage to YouTube. The AI has been rewritten for the sequel, so you'll see enemies using the environment to their advantage. There is also now a manual aiming system, allowing you full control over the crosshair. Keep your eyes peeled for various new weapons too, like a rocket launcher with laser-controlled rockets, a one-handed grenade launcher – what does Rico want to do with his other hand when he's using that? – remote-triggered C4, and a detachable mounted minigun. You need to know the right people though, these are not the sort of things you get down B&Q. The game will have its fair share of knockers. Not like the gratuitous ones in the saboteur though. I mean as in people who don't like the game. The thing is, there doesn't really seem to be anywhere new that the sandbox genre can go. Just expect more of the same, albeit in a beautifully presented and varied game world. If you go into it expecting a deep and meaningful experience on a par with the characters and humour of GTA, or the story and depth of, say, the Final Fantasy series, then you will be disappointed. Now you die. Yeah? How are you going to push buttons when your fingers are broken? That doesn't make Just Cause 2 a bad game though. In fact, this is the perfect gaming experience, if you can see the immense fun in causing mindless destruction and massive explosions without any real life consequences. Book your flights and buy this game for now! Keep it real, keep it game tank.